Hello my lovers, welcome back to Rouge Pat Beauty. Just as we start filming, Betty has arrived. Hello Booba. Hello little girl. Oh, she's come to film. Yes she has. She's been having a little sleep downstairs. Oh gosh, very bright. Sorry, try not to move around too much. Right, I'm going to put some makeup on. Um, I'm going to use one of the oldest palettes I have. I don't know how old it is. I'm going to apologise now. I know this is going to be frustrating because you can't get it unless somebody's selling it somewhere it's urban decay but it's the smoked palette it's one of the very first palettes i bought from urban decay zipped case um but i absolutely love the green shade loaded in there um and as you can see it has been used but this was in the days when i only had maybe two or three palettes um but yes loaded I'm going to use, going to do a green eye and I thought we'd just have a little chit chat about things. Um, rather than me always describing the products I'm using, which I probably will still do because it's a habit I have as you know, I'm just going to sort of do makeup and have a chat. So if there are any products you see me using that you're really interested in and you want to know more, let me know and uh, just in the comments and I'll reply if I can, if I can remember. So I'm going in with the Casilomas um, Sheer Liquid Illuminator. This is the Bee Beauty. You find this in Superdrug. You can sort of see it's a luminous liquid, but it really does give a lovely, lovely sheen on the face. How's the rosacea looking? I've written a blog post about a product I've been using um, rather than the Islaic Acid. I don't think it's looking too bad at the minute. Um, what else am I going to do? I have the new Revlon foundation. I think the colour's too light for me. I've got 240 natural beige. And after I got it, Revlon got in touch and mentioned about sending me um, the foundation and the concealer. So if they do, it will be a darker shade. I say if, because this happens, and you get asked, and what shade would you like, and then nothing arrives. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that, and I'm also gonna use a little bit of the Lancome Skin Feels Good. But I think I might do my eyes first, as I say. I think we might just we might just do that and I've got a nasty spot on the end of my nose I do apologize it has been bleeding and I've got a lovely one right in the corner of my eye as well I just don't know what to say really I'm going to use some of the Art Deco um, all-in-one eye primer which you can buy Art Deco from Beauty Bay I'm just going to pop that over my lids just gonna have a chat about stuff. Telly, we are back watching um, the OA. Have you watched the first series of OA on Netflix? No, watch it because we're on to the second series. Oh my goodness, it is amazing. It's just the most fabulous story. And the actress in it wrote it as well. I think she produces it, she wrote it, she stars in it. Britt Marling. She's very charismatic. And it helps that Jason Isaacs is in it. Although he's not the nicest of people. I can overlook that. I think he's rather splendid. And it's... You need to do the first series and really absorb that and the story and then go into the second series. I can't wait to see where this is going and I do sincerely hope that there's a series three because it, it's just so quirky and oh, just love it, absolutely love it. We're continuing with our Star Trek which is a bit frustrating at times. I feel like it's a bit... Oh, I don't know. They focus a lot on 
the sort of, as Craig said, enough of the emotion, let's get on with the proper Trekkie stuff. So it gets quite frustrated when it gets all personal and emotions come into it. I'm just using the Revolution pencil in brown just to do my waterline. So we're continuing to watch Trek, of course, um, away. And we've not really watched anything else because Craig's been super busy. Um, I have been watching The Great British Sewing Bee. I've been watching Glow Up, which is the search for a new makeup artist, which I'm really enjoying. Um, yeah, that's sort of it in that respect. Like the brown. I'm just going to take, where's the brush? Take that brown actually onto the lid slightly. So we are, where are we today? Is it Tuesday today? Is it Tuesday, Betty Boo? I think it is Tuesday. She flops herself down. It was Mother's Day in the UK on Sunday, 31st of March. I'm just going to use a little bit of concealer just so you know a bit of what's going on. Um, which it's sort of oh gosh it's really difficult to describe but it's very hit and miss for me my mum died in 2002 and unfortunately i've had a lot of mother's days without her and some i don't know some are easier than others is that what i want to say some i sort of get through it and i'm okay this year was a real poof real struggle real real struggle um i went into town the day before had some jobs and things to do and there were just i was just aware of it i suppose because i was sensitive cards and flowers and i found myself sort of choking back um the tears a lot of the time i really felt quite strongly um yeah it was really really tough um this year most definitely um and it's a difficult one and reading on twitter and i spoke to some people as well and i oh gosh it's a it's a really really difficult subject because some people were saying they didn't feel they could share their day or talk about mother's day because they felt it was upsetting to people that it was too much for people others were saying you know you've just got to get on with it everything else um there's been a lot of comments about you know people like myself bloggers being asked to post things for mother's day and again that's a personal choice thing if you feel you can i I'm glad I didn't have anything to post because I don't think I would have been able to do it this year. Um, no, it, it's just I'm going to use the green. Um, so it's a very, it's been a very difficult one. But it's the first year I've been aware of so much contention around the topic, and I, I wanted to sort of, I don't know, talk about how I feel because I think it's sometimes very difficult to admit to yourself that sometimes you probably feel things that you don't want to to feel. Um, the first thing I will say is that when anybody, whenever I, a friend or somebody I know, I see they've lost a parent, I just, I feel for them because I know the pain and you almost don't want somebody to go through that pain um, because you know how awful it is. Um, and that's, that's one thing. Um, with regard to Mother's Day, it's very, very difficult because I personally wouldn't want anybody to feel that they couldn't post about their lovely day, you know. And it's a very difficult situation because when you've lost a parent, you kind of want people to appreciate that they've still got their parent but you can't put that over onto somebody that pressure but equally and i defy anybody to say they're not and i'm admitting this you're envious 
you are envious of course you are you are envious of these people who stroll arm in arm with their mums and they're there buying flowers and presents and planning where they're going to go out for lunch and I think being fair of course you're going to be envious because it's something you'd love to be able to do you know I deliberately didn't go out on Mother's Day because I knew I wouldn't be able to cope with seeing people with the parents so yeah um I'm just going to use the colour called back door we've just got a rainstorm if you can hear a noise in the background so it's a difficult one because you do feel all these different emotions and you don't want to be a bad person and make somebody think that they can't talk about it but equally it's very hard to hear somebody talking about it um, so it is a mix a mix of all sorts of things that it's nice to see people happy and having their mum there to share the time with but of course there's that little bit of what could be envy thinking about how many things have happened that you know I know I do how many things that I know my mum would be really interested in how many things I've done and I've not been able to share that with her um, and it's it's difficult it's really really difficult and I really felt for people on Sunday and talking to friends who you know were saying I just didn't feel I could say something because it just felt that there was so much sort of tension around and it should never be like that we should be able to say this is how we're feeling I just feel everything has to be so analyzed now whatever you say um, it is very, very difficult to sort of have an opinion without offending somebody or it being the wrong thing to say or it's anti this or... And a lot of the time it's meant so completely innocently and a person hasn't meant to hurt somebody and actually they've tried to help. But there's so many sort of, oh, you should say this now and you should say that and it's very, very difficult to get it right very difficult um, but yeah I, I just found it really hard this year I really did I bought a bunch of daffodils um, because my mum loved daffodils and I always got her a bunch as a sort of an extra something because she loved them so much um, yeah it was just a tough one and oddly as soon as the days passed the weight's lifted again um but i did i just felt very heavy-hearted this this year and i just wanted to talk about it if anybody else is out there and you know feeling similar things or you can over analyze it and think is that normal should i be thinking that and shouldn't i be thinking that i don't think there's any right answer to be honest at all i think whatever your feeling is right in these circumstances And I think because I live so far away from where my parents are both buried, just sometimes that's when it feels like such a distance, when I think maybe I'd like to just pop um, to the cemetery. I can't really do that. And the odd thing is when I do go back home to Yorkshire and I go to the cemetery, I never stay that long. I don't feel... I have to it's almost like just checking in you know just checking in and saying hi how are you I'm fine and just having a tidy up a bit um, so it's odd really but sometimes I just think just to be a bit nearer just to be able to do that um, it's just one of those things I suppose when you can't do something it always seems heavier more magnified than when you can um, And where I used to live, I could walk my dog Sally dog. I had a Jack Russell and we used to walk to the cemetery. And Sally was mesmerised by squirrels. They just taunted her. 
all the time um and we used to just have a wander and I don't know I've always I've never had a problem I've always found cemeteries rather comfortable places to be I don't know if that sounds totally bizarre and wrong um but I have I've always you know you wander around and it's peaceful and generally it's when people do speak everybody's sort of very polite and friendly and yeah and there's nothing better than spotting a little squirrel dashing across but anyway that's just an update on my general how I felt this weekend I feel fine now she says creating this evil look of an eye let's just put some of I thought we'd do something more than the usual. Well, that red spot on my nose is a delight, isn't it? I think we could maybe put some base on. I have some of the Infinity Glass by Linda Holberg or Holberg. This is just a clear liquid and I'm going to mix the Revlon Candid Foundation. So sort of half a pump of that and then some of the skin feels good from Lancome um, in the warm beige shade I'm going out for coffee with my friend Diana you may remember last year I mentioned Diana um, she's a neighbour and we had the seagull incident the injured seagull and we met caring for the seagull wow that looks really white on camera it doesn't look as white here but it looks really white on camera gosh look joker-esque let's blend that down um so yes um i always feel that out of sad things sometimes there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that was uh meeting Diana so we're going for a coffee um, this week which will be lovely she's a very busy lady she's always so busy gosh that really does look very light just bear in mind that there's a lot of light coming through the window um, plus I think it always does look stark when you've done your eyes first So we're heading into Easter very soon. Soon be Easter holes. Soon be kiddies off school. And here where I live, Easter holes basically means it's the start of the um, holiday season. We start getting lots and lots and lots of tourists. Which is a great, great thing for the town and the economy and we have our fabulous pirate festival at the start of May does that still look white? it does look very white doesn't it? so yeah pirate festival which is chaotic fun um, there's just pirates for man and beast it has to be said um, so yeah it's getting to our busy time it's lovely for the town but when you live here oh dear it can be very very difficult <laughs> and also we can't go on the beach after May which is also a huge frustration there are other beaches thank goodness but Try explaining to your dog why suddenly they can't go on the beach that they're really used to going on. I have some of the award winning um, soft English mineral makeup. It's their blusher in the shade soft. It's won an award and so it should because it's fabulous. And I'm going to use that as a bronzer rather than a bronzer.
I can't believe, I'm going to say it again, how white the makeup looks on camera when I'm sat here and it's just about a perfect match for my skin. How odd. But there is an awful lot of light coming through the window at the moment. All natural light as well. Back to the brown pencil. And a bit of a eye line going on. On the top of the lashes. Brows. I'm never happy with my blending. Little secret there, whenever I edit my videos, I always find fault with the makeup I've done. Always, everything I find fault with. I can see certain angles and I just think, you've missed that particular angle. You've not quite filled that bit in as much as you could have done. I'm always very, very critical. Right, I have some of the rose blusher from English Mineral Makeup as well. Is there any on the pad? Oh, there is. Just pat it on the face. And then we'll just get a little brush and blend. Some of the Too Faced um, Ice Queen. It's liquid glitter eyeshadow. And I've been looking at it thinking, shall I, shan't I? Will I, won't I? And I'm thinking it's just too pretty not to. I love the green, but I want to add, uh, add, add a little bit of shimmer. This is going to be perfect. I should have done it before I put the mascara on. But you know me, I don't do anything in the order I should do things. I like this glitter because you do have time to play with it and work with it. Before it all dries down and sets. Let's get the mascara again, sort the lashes out. So this is going to be a super long video. Oh, I love it. Some of it's on my lashes as well. That's great. Work with that. That's not too bad. And then I have some of the Too Faced. Um, this is Polite and Pretty Lip Gloss. The collaboration with Erica Jane from Real Housewives. Right, thank you for joining me for the chat. Um, let me know what you think of the look. It is extreme. I actually quite like it. Yeah, I used to wear my eyes this heavy on counter. Usually, I did wear a lot of green, but purple as well. I loved wearing purple, and I would have it quite dark. It's not the tidiest. I've not been as tidy as I I should be, but. Life's too short. I do like it. Hmm. Suits my mood. Thank you for joining me. Any questions about the products I've used, let me know. Sorry I've used a palette that's just 
not out there anymore but to be fair there are plenty of greens like that one that's as simple as that and any glitter or no glitter choice is yours yes i'm happy with that thank you very much as i say any questions about any of the products i've used just mention it in the comments and i will see you in another video very very soon bye for now <laughs>